I've had this X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt laser now for a little over a month. It never ceases to amaze me the cool things that this thing produces. And today I'm gonna to show you 11 creative ways I managed to use this machine. Welcome to Alley Picked. Overall, I'd say that this machine is pretty amazing. I'm gonna give you a brief introduction for those of you who aren't familiar with what a laser machine can do for you. First of all, it can score an image on almost any object. It can also engrave those objects, like I did on this wood sign here. And then third, it can cut. It cuts all kinds of materials, including wood. And now, let me show you 11 cool ways that I use this machine. By the way, everything you're gonna see me make here today, I've used the X-Tool Creative Space free software. First up, this leather coaster. It's a thick piece of leather. The settings I use for this are on the bottom right of the screen. The three numbers refer to power, speed, and number of passes. It took less than a minute to cut this four inch leather circle. I then cut a second leather circle the same size, which I'm gonna use to make a double sided coaster. I stitched the two together to make a beautiful double sided coaster. If you'd like to know all the details about how I made this coaster, I'm gonna be publishing a full length video on this project soon. I needed some foam circles to put on the bottom of a footstool. I used to cut these by hand and they were always a little bit imperfect. Using the laser, I was able to cut four perfect circles of different sizes. I then used these on a footstool to protect the glass bottles from scratching the floor. One of my woodworking hobbies is chip carving. This is where I would transfer an image onto a piece of wood and carve it. The transfer process can be time consuming and tedious using graphite paper. The laser makes it simple. I took an image from a book, scanned it, then converted it to an SVG file and used that to engrave the image onto a piece of basswood. Here I could scale it to any size I wanted and score it on the wood. Now I was able to do my regular chip carving. Using a laser makes this process so much easier. Next up, a wood base and grid for my laser machine. By having a base with grid lines, I can be sure that whatever I'm gonna score or engrave comes out straight on every object. X-Tool sells a nice metal base for about 140 bucks, which I plan to get sometime in the future. Now, when I have to make the same laser cuts on the same type and size of pieces, this makes assembly line type work repeatable. For example, my next project, slate coasters. You can purchase various size and shapes of slate coasters for a reasonable price on Amazon. I cut out a wood circle and used it for a guide template for the coasters. I lined up the wood frame on my grid, place the coaster inside, then engrave. Simply repeat the process to make yourself a full set of coasters. The laser can easily score and engrave images on glass. I found this piece of glass in the alley trash. It was a shelf inside of a cabinet that somebody was throwing away. In order for the laser to engrave it, the glass needs to be cleaned thoroughly and then obscured. For that, I'm gonna use some cheap black tempera paint. This bottle was just a couple of bucks at the hobby store. I found that a soft bristle brush works the best. I didn't have good luck using a foam brush. You might need to give it a second coat. You can't have any light showing through the glass. After engraving, you simply wash off the paint and any residue on the back. You can also get creative by painting the back of the glass afterwards for a different style. Here's another glass project I made using a four-sided jar, flat on each side. Same basic principle, clean the glass, apply the paint, engrave, and rinse. There's a lot of accessories that you can buy for your X-Tool. I only have two that I'm gonna briefly go over today. Number one is this air assist tool. This thing is basically a compressor that pumps air through here and onto the surface as the laser cuts. 
The reason this helps out is if you don't have it, you're gonna get burn marks on some of your surfaces. With this, you get nice clean cuts. The second accessory that I have is this RA2. It's a rotating accessory tool. It plugs into this unit and then rotates and turns automatically with your object on here as the laser engraves and cuts. It's the only way you can really engrave on round objects. And I'm gonna show you this in real time, how I used it. To engrave a round jar, you're gonna to need to use the RA2 attachment. I'm not gonna get into the details about setting this thing up, but what it does is rotate the glass jar for you. Since the laser can't rotate, this device is perfectly timed with the laser so that it rotates slowly as the laser engraves your object. If you notice on this project, I put a white box to the left of the jar. Being so close to the end of the rollers, the jar had a tendency to slip off. So I put this box here to keep it in place. This project took the laser about an hour to print because there were so many small bone and paw print images. This machine engraves on cork material also. Here's a couple of cork coasters I engraved and cut using the laser. One of my favorite things to use the laser for is sign making. At the hobby stores, they sell all kinds of wood blanks that you can use to engrave images onto. Here's one I made for a company called Simpleton Creations, which by the way, prints my Alley Pick t-shirts in case you're interested. Check them out here at www.simpletoncreation.com. I'll also leave a link in the video description. By using the higher power setting, the laser will engrave deeper into the wood. My plan here is to paint my Alley Pick logo inside the grooves. I also embedded a couple of strong rare earth magnets into the back. As good and fun as this machine is, I think there's a few areas in which it can be improved. Number one, to raise the height of this machine, you've got to take off the rubber feet and then add these extension pieces and then replace the rubber foot. It's not horrible, it just seems that these can be telescopic or some other solution. Number two, this rotating tool. It has so many parts and pieces and there's a fair amount of assembly and guesswork involved in order to figure out which parts you're gonna need to use. My third suggestion, the free software that comes with this, it should have an online help reference within the program itself. I think that would be very useful. Number four, complete documentation for any of these parts, including the laser itself. Everything that I find seems to be on the overview side rather than detailed, comprehensive documentation. This thing does require some patience, practice, and a lot of YouTube video watching in order to really master it, but it's worth it. This thing is really incredible. It has so many uses and I'm learning more and more every day. Thanks for watching Alley Picked. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley. Mm -hmm.